Eric Adams rushing to release his promised anti-crime plan in the next hour, mainly targeting gun and gang violence following deadly police shootings over the weekend. New York City Councilman Joe Borelli joining us now with more on this. Joe, let's just look back at what happened over the weekend. Uh, you've had five officers shot in New York so far in the month of January. That's extraordinary. Jason Rivera, 22 years old, was the first one to be killed. His partner, William Mora, clinging to life now. And the alleged shooter in this case, LaShawn McNeil, had a lengthy rap, shoot, rap sheet. He was a convicted felon. There we see the two officers. He also had an illegally purchased gun. If we can put that up on the screen, it was a Glock with a 50-round drum magazine. His mother said that he had a very distorted mental state, though she didn't believe that she had guns in her apartment when she called the police. I mean, put together the pieces of all of this, and how does this happen in a city where the mayor said he was going to return law and order to the Big Apple? Well, first of all, I think Mayor Adams has to return law and order to the Big Apple. I mean, this is something that he ran on both in the primary election, uh, to his credit, frankly, with his own party, uh, and in the general election. New Yorkers, by and large, support him in this measure, and he needs to keep his head down. But how does it happen, John? I mean, it's a good question. In 2016, the last year I found statistics on this, Two-thirds of criminal defendants who were charged with felony gun possession uh, and gun-related charges had their charges dropped and they pled to misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. So even when we have the NYPD out there doing a great job, uh, it's soft on crime prosecutors. It's soft on crime laws. Uh, it, it's the theory le that progressives have that they want to end the carceral system or whatever they want to call it. Uh, but it's all these things add up to, to, to very little gun charges, uh, gun detention uh, yeah. given to these perpetrators. And that's before Alvin Bragg, and that's before bail reform. Now, LaShawn McNeil had been living in Maryland. Apparently, his mother asked him to come up to New York and help with his brother, who had some sort of disability. But uh, Eric Adams said uh, after the shooting that it's not just New York City that needs to really respond to this. It's the federal government as well. Listen to what he said. So we need help from the federal government. Yes. We're doing our job in NYPD taking thousands of guns off the street. Every one they take off, we're having five come in. How do we stop this if the federal government does not stop the flow of guns in this city? You know, he spent most of the last 24 days responding to a series of violent crimes in New York City. But is it really the federal government's role here to come in and, and take the lead on this issue? I mean, during the 1990s, uh, it was city officials in New York that really got a handle on crime. Murders were down almost 70 percent. And, and to my knowledge, the feds didn't play a huge role in that. No, no, it was mostly done by the men and women of the NYPD, uh, and he was a member of, of them, and he should know that. Uh, he's also said things like, we have to return these plain clothes anti-crime teams. That's a good policy. That's a policy he, he should restore. Uh, but, but again, to go back to those stats, if, if we're still making arrests and prosecutors are not going to charge them with crimes that put them in jail, uh, then it's all for naught. You know, we already have uh, a, a federal task force. The governor is claiming to announce this new task force that we already actually have. Uh, and, and it does a lot of hard work. Uh, and and we, its members, they, they go to different states, uh, they run wiretaps, they develop confidential informants, they, they get warrants, they do all this police work. Uh, and then to, to actually listen to people who want to defund the police uh, somehow have to a, a account for how this is all going to add up. You can't have a defunded police force and then go out there uh, after a shooting like this and say we need more task force and more expensive police work. Yeah, you know, this is going to be a huge political issue. Look at what our new Fox News poll found in, in terms of people who are either extremely or very concerned about various issues. Inflation, higher prices, number one at 85 percent. Crime, right behind it at 81 percent. And, Joe, this isn't just New York City because there was a, a police constable uh, in Harris County, Texas, who was shot and killed over the weekend. There was a police officer in Washington, D.C., who was shot, thankfully, had minor wounds. It was treated at the hospital and released. But this isn't just New York City. This is all over. No, no. We see this uh, really in every large city. I mean, Chicago is probably the prime example, but we also see it really in, in, in large cities where, where Soros-backed prosecutors uh, have eroded all semblance of law and order. Uh, you know, it, it is true that when we, we do, unfortunately, arrest people for smaller crimes, uh, they are prevented from, from doing bigger crimes in the future. Look at any one of these shootings that, that made headlines in New York or Chicago or anywhere. Uh, every time you make a gun arrest of someone who's a shooter, there's always a, a, a long menu 
menu of previous charges, and almost yeah. always they involve a gun. It's a fraction of a percent of New Yorkers and big city residents who are committing all the crimes. Let the cops go after them. We can all support them on that. That should be a non-controversial thing to say uh, in this city and every other. All right. Well, apparently for that uh, that one New York City councilwoman in Harlem, that's a very controversial thing to say. We'll see where she stands on it soon, and we'll see where the mayor stands coming up in the next hour. Joe Borelli, always good to talk to you.